I was serving as the pastoral administrator of three parishes in Northeast Iowa, and one significant parish was St. Bridget's in Postville. A few days before the raid, we had heard rumors that there might be one someplace in Iowa, and every person who had a Hispanic community within their parish was hoping that it would not be theirs. But on the Friday before the raid, I did receive a phone call with the question, had I heard the rumor? And I said, no, what rumor? And they said that there would be a raid at Agriprocessors in Postville, Iowa. Agriprocessors is a kosher meatpacking plant that started in 1987. And they first of all had many people from the Ukraine, from Russia working there, and then gradually people from Mexico and Guatemala came in. So that at the time of the raid, there were probably two thirds of the Hispanic community were from Guatemala and one third from Mexico. On the Saturday, I received another call, same question, had I heard the rumor. We have a Hispanic minister, Paul Rael. He was away for the weekend, and so I was kind of alone and rather traumatized myself. On Monday morning, I contacted Paul, said the, that the rumors were going around, and we said in our own minds, well, it certainly will not be today, and we will gather our people together. We will first of all meet, schedule what we will do, how we will talk to the people. At 10.03, I received a call from Paul Rael, and he said to me, it's no rumor, the helicopters are here. I was 12 miles from Postville. I followed the helicopters. I drove to agri-processors and stood outside the plant, seeing only ICE agents armed with guns, helicopters flying overhead, sheriff, police, and many frightened Postville residents. I went there because I wanted our Hispanic community to know that the Postville community and the St. Bridget's community was concerned about them, but I didn't see any of them. So after standing there for about an hour, I went back to our church. And in the church, I found women huddled with their little children. And a small bilingual boy came out and said to me, Sister, can our friends come too? My response, of course, was, of course they can. Tell anyone who was alone or afraid to come to St. Bridget's. I don't think I had a clue what those words would mean. I met one woman, she had a few cookies and some lemonade. And I think we thought, well, that'll be wonderful for the afternoon. By seven o'clock, we had over 400 people pouring into St. Bridget's, men, women, children, most of them crying, little children desperately looking for their parents, older brothers and sisters trying to care for them. Um, women and men trying to see who had or had not been de detained within their community. They were desperate. We were feeding them. The church became their home. They slept in the pews. People came from all over bringing us blankets, toothbrushes, games, toys to assist us. I always say to people, we saw that evening humanity at its best, and we also saw it at its worst, because we saw what happens when the law of the land does not keep up with the need of the land. And so we saw families separated. We saw people fearing that they would never again see their mother or father or a spouse, thinking they will never again see their spouse or little children. I am told that had I been inside the plant at that 10.03 when the helicopters arrived, I would have seen one of our parishioners, little Elena, grab her cell phone, call our Hispanic minister, Paul, and simply say, Pablo, take care of my children. That's the only thought that our people had, care for the children. When ICE came in, they had 600 warrants. They only issued 389 because those were the people working that particular day shift. Mm. Some of the other warrants, of course, were people that were working either the 3 to 11 shift or the night shift. So of those 389, most of them were men, but many also were women. They did release the women if they had children to care for with an ankle bracelet or a GPS device on their ankle, which was, as one person said, she felt like she was a dog being tagged. And those women were released. They were able to come back to Postville, but they were never able to work. And so each week they had to come to St. Bridget's and ask for food, ask for money to pay for their rent, their medical bills, and so on. During that first week, we did house over 400 people within our church. And I know that St. Bridget's was thought of as a safe haven, as a place where people could feel protected. 
they were too afraid to go to their homes. They feared that ICE might come in and take them from their homes, and then they never would see their children. So it was a place of union where people could meet their little children, people could meet their cousins, their nieces, their nephews, and so on.